leader of Ukraine's Liberal People's Power Party. He joins us now from the Ukrainian capital, Kiev. Welcome to the program, Yuri. Can I ask you first about Mariupol? We've heard that Ukrainian soldiers and civilians are still at the Azovstal steel plant in Mariupol, but Vladimir Putin says he's now in control of the entire city except for that sprawling industrial complex. What have you heard about what's happening both in that steel plant and in Mariupol more generally? Well, if you're talking about Mariupol more generally, we are having a genocide in Mariupol, so it's quite plain. And the only reason uh, people are targeted, the only reason civilians are killed is because they're Ukrainian. So we have terrible war crimes and we have uh, uh, Russia attempting to destroy a whole city and level it totally. And that's what they've been doing for the past month. That's what they're continuing to do. Uh, and now they're trying to do that with the um, civilians which are sheltering in the uh, uh, Azov-style steelworks plant, uh, which has uh, uh, quite well-defended bunkers, uh, well-defended spaces. And uh, our defenders have been protecting the civilians in these uh, steel steelworks. Uh, and... Um, uh, Russia has just been trying to level uh, this place with uh, uh, bombs, with heavy uh, dumb, so-called dumb bombs, which are uh, which were used uh, uh, last time uh, in the 20th century, in, uh, in the Second World War, in the 50s and the 60s, but haven't been used uh, in the 21st century. So, uh, perhaps in Syria, where Russia did the same things in Syria. Uh, so it's a, ter a terrible thing. It's terrible things happening. Uh, people are dying, uh, and uh, obviously Russia doesn't want to stop. Um, so uh, both the defenders of Mariupol, the Ukrainian government, have offered uh, the chance to create a humanitarian corridor and take these people out of Mariupol, uh, take the wounded out of Mariupol, take the civilians out of Mariupol. But we see that uh, even, even though we are, pro we are uh, proposing this to Russia every day, uh, they simply uh, refuse to take this offer and they continue their war crimes. And what about the situation in Kiev where you are? We know that Russian forces retreated from around the capital in order to redouble their efforts in the eastern Donbass region. We also hear that many people who fled Kiev are now returning, uh, thinking that it's perhaps safe once again. Is, is that the feeling that you're getting there? Yes, of course. I mean, I, I've been in Kiev uh, throughout the war. Uh, I never left Kiev on the 24th of February. Uh, and I can tell you for sure that Kiev now is uh, uh, as safe as any large city in Ukraine can be. Because uh, you have to remember that Russia is continuing uh, to use uh, rocket attacks, it's continuing to use aerial bombardment. Uh, but this is happening all over Ukraine, including Western Ukraine. For example, we had uh, this uh, a couple of days ago in Lviv, in a city which was considered to be uh, very safe. Uh, but if you're talking about uh, if you're talking about any uh, danger from land, Russian land forces, this danger is non-existent currently in Kiev, in the capital. Uh, so the capital is as dangerous as any uh, large city in Western Ukraine because it is uh, only susceptible to Russian rocket attacks and Russian aerial bombardment. So uh, Kiev is coming back to life. Uh, more and more businesses are beginning to open. More and more uh, people from uh, Kiev which evacuated are coming back uh, to Kiev. Uh, so with every day, it is begun, becoming, uh, becoming more like it was uh, uh, before the war. But of course, uh, we are continuing to have at least once a day, at least once a day, we have air raid sirens. Uh, so of course, we still have this danger from rocket attacks. But I can give you an example. I'm just coming back now. The reason I'm here uh, outside, I'm coming back from uh, the nor northern, northern Kiev, northern uh, region, Kiev region, to the north of Kiev. And we were, our organization was helping people in the far, in far northern villages, uh, villages to get food, get medicine, uh, and so on. And I can just give you one example. We were just in the one village to the north of Kiev, closer to the Belarusian border, where uh, people told me that six civilians in their village were killed by Russians for no reason. Mm. Just, just, they were just civilians, and they were just taken by Russians, and they were just murdered. Uh, so uh, once again, I have to stress that this is uh, bordering on genocide, this is clearly war crimes, and... Uh, uh, I urge the international community to remember this and uh, uh, to, to do its utmost uh, to bring um, uh, the Russians uh, to uh, uh, responsibility. As, as our correspondent in Lviv was explaining, Russia's offensive in eastern Donbass is continuing. Uh, the Russian forces said that they'd taken Kremina on Wednesday. Now they're saying they've taken the town of Rubizne. How confident are you that Ukrainian forces can continue to defend Donbass? Uh, in terms of defense of the Donbass, we are uh, quite optimistic. Uh, uh, our uh, army uh, uh, is doing its utmost and is, being, is able to fend off uh, the Russian attacks, and we are seeing this uh, 
uh, on the ground there in the Donbas. Uh, and uh, this is a pr primarily a matter of whether we get sufficient weapons from the West uh, in time to be able to defend uh, ourselves even better. I mean, we are, we, are, we are doing very well even without all these uh, Western weapons. But of course, if we had these weapons earlier, and if we had more of them and uh, quicker and heavier, heavier weapons, then we would be in a, in a, even, even a, in a better position. But I have to stress that uh, uh, apart from Mario, which is of course in a very dire situation, in, in a very bad situation, uh, the uh, current uh, position on the front in the Donbas uh, is rather optimistic for uh, Ukrainian, uh, for the Ukrainian army, for our heroic army, and uh, we are hopeful in being able to uh, stop the Russian attack. Okay, Yuri Levchenko, we will have to leave it there, but we really appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you again you for, for joining me. us.